pastor who kept saying, we've got to talk about these economic issues. We've got to talk about these labor issues. Please welcome that young man who has stood with us throughout this struggle, the Reverend Jesse Jackson. My sincere thanks to you for your kindness, for your will for justice. We were sitting in the class room in Atlanta, Georgia, in Dr. King's office, rather, preparing to go to Washington for the Poor People's Campaign. He said, between the rise of militarism, racism, economic exploitation, we must go beyond the historical boundaries and create a new America. So some whites, some Appalachians, some Native Americans, some Latinos, some Jewish allies from New York, led by Al Lowenstein, some Latinos from Southwest Texas and Arkansas, some blacks from Deep South who decided to go to Washington, preparing to engage in necessary civil disobedience to shift the budget from the war in Vietnam to the war on poverty. He received a telephone call from Reverend Kyle, Jim Lawson. You got to stop by Memphis. Sanitation workers are fighting for collective bargaining, for public recognition, and for justice. The moral authority of those workers was astounding. Their cause was overwhelming, so we went to Memphis to divert from the geography, but not from the agenda. Those workers, two of them, I brought to be with us today because they represent such a compelling moral case from Memphis, Tennessee, a sanitation worker for the Nickelberry. These are workers, these are sanitation workers from Memphis, Tennessee. Say thank you. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for standing up. Thank you for holding out. Thank you for being just. Thank you for caring. Thank you for loving. Somewhere in the midst of that struggle, we sought to make the America the land of all of our dreams. We marched, and that was a march, and the government had disruptors at the back of the march. So when your governor said they considered putting provocateurs in a demonstration, but it might not go well on television, that was an old script that happened to Dr. King in Memphis as they sought to discredit him. But these men and their wives kept on marching. And then we had a, a mass rally at Mason's Temple Church on April the 3rd, 1968. And then the next day, while talking all over there about our future plans for ending war, ending greed, and fighting for justice, it's time to go to dinner around 6 o'clock. And uh, I was coming across the courtyard. Dr. King came out the door and said, Jesse, you're late again. Actually, he was late. I was late. He said, uh, Jesse, you're going to dinner. You don't have all the time. I said, Doc, it does not require uh, a time for eating, the prerequisite is an appetite. He said, you're crazy. And we laughed. He asked a friend of his, Ben Branch, won't you play tonight the song, Precious Lord, and Ben said, I will. He raised his hand, I said, Doc, and Ben, the bullet hit him in the neck. He was killed, murdered, instantly, 39 years old. In similar ways, America's before and after Martin Luther King. It is his democracy that we embrace today. A democracy, multiracial democracy, that's King democracy. Multicultural democracy, that's King democracy. 18 year olds can vote, that's King democracy. Christians and Jews and Muslims and Hindus and Sikhs and sit side by side, that's King democracy. Stop war and invest in peace. 
that's King Democracy. So about this time he was killed, let us stop, join hands by his in prayers. We commemorate in silence and reflect upon the murder he found, the murder he left, and the promise of the murder he dreamed of. We pray because we will not allow one bullet to kill the dream. And I hate to kill love, the death to stop the movement to make this land the land of our dreams and make the world more peaceful. We thank you, dear God, for sending Martin Luther King Jr. our way. Please work to stand in that great tradition of justice and jobs and fairness. We seek a world where we stand in war no more. We beat swords in the fly shares and spears the printing hooks. We pray, dear God, tonight in our lifetime the men and women in a high place of hard heart to hear our plea. Amen. Thank you. We gather to commemorate the life, legacy, and living of Dr. King. We commemorate tonight the crucifixion. Tomorrow we vote and realize the resurrection, the new hope, the redemption. We gather 43 years later, the dream and life work is on the attack. States' rights are expanding north to undermine civil rights for all. They were involved in two expensive wars, the bankrupting cities, scapegoating teachers, cutting vital services from education to parks and police services. Resegregation of our society is rapidly underway. Milwaukee, the most segregated city in America, a source of shame. Poverty is rising, big corporations not paying taxes, all companies making trillions in profits, bank bailout not connected to lending or saving people's homes. 
bail out the richest Americans at Christmas time, the tax break extension, freezing federal workers and laying on public workers in March. Unemployment in the nation down slightly for the nation, sheer rising for blacks and Latinos, more than twice as high as the average. Entrenched infrastructure of discrimination and disparity. We need the White House Conference on Racial Equality, Economic Justice and Poverty. More teachers and coaches, not more jail wardens and police. We need to rebuild cities ravaged by home foreclosures, student loan debt forgiveness and lower tuition costs, sinking middle class and growth of poverty at home as America's humanitarian crisis, we need intervention. We need to restructure our system to more federal resources, not just fortify the same old system. Dr. King for the triple evils of racism, militarism, and economic exploitation, this generation has a special burden and opportunity. The dress a system of values and priorities that are the control. Let nothing break your spirit. Let nothing break your faith. This land is our land. We must not give up on each other. Our God or surrender our faith. Tonight we commemorate the crucifixion. Tomorrow we celebrate the resurrection and the redemption and the hope. When we vote tomorrow, we make Dr. King happy. When we vote, we send a message, one bullet cannot kill a dream or a movement. When we vote, we affirm truth across the earth will rise again. Dr. King is alive today because he lives in us. He changed the course of our nation. There was America before, America after Dr. King. This land is our land. This is what democracy doesn't look like. Hold your head high. We live together. We love together. We fight together. We vote together. It gets dark sometimes. It gets dark sometimes. But the morning coming. It gets dark sometimes. But the morning coming. We live. We love. We give. We stand up. We fight back. The Lord is our light and our salvation. Who shall we fear? The Lord is the strength of our lives. It gets dangerous sometimes. But yea, though I walk through battles and shadows of death, I will feel no evil to die with me and that's power in that faith. Power in that hope when we love each other and turn to each other, not only each other, and fight together. We'll get our jobs. We'll preserve our democracy. We'll get peace. We'll set the wall no more. And so we thank God for being with us today. Being the wind beneath our wings. The writer said, we've been may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. It's morning time. It's dream time. It's hell time. It's Martin Luther King time. Keep hope alive. Vote. Vote.
Support staff, about 500 people, and all 500 in each school is going to vote tomorrow. So we took a tour this week across the state from, from Milwaukee to, to Madison to Oshkosh, right around the state, going school, school by school, the raising tuition, raising tuition and low and Pell grants. Every student in this university system, 180,000, are eligible to register and vote tomorrow. Yeah. If you want more tuition, vote about it. If you want more Pell Grants, vote about it. Yeah. All those high school students under your command, you should register them tomorrow and you should lead them to vote on tomorrow. Yeah. There are 400 
2,000 students in city community colleges are in technical schools. 400,000. They should vote tomorrow. Say vote. High school students. Vote tomorrow. On site. Same day. Tomorrow is Civic Day. Every 18 year old. Every community college student. Every university student. Vote your power. Vote your hopes. And not your fears. And so tomorrow's not enough for you to vote. Under your command are students by the tens of thousands who need to return the state to democratic leadership. The democratic leadership. This is what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. When everybody vote, this is what democracy looks like.